Hello, and welcome to episode 38 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Painting Series. In this episode, we're going to paint Captain Taro from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. The Dewback is an impressive miniature, and thankfully quite easy to paint. The expansion comes with a regular sand trooper equipped with a shock lance, as well as Captain Taro bearing a flamethrower. In this video, I'll be showing how I've chosen to paint a traditional green Dewback but you could easily transpose the basic techniques to create some more imaginative colour schemes if you wish. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the miniature in black, followed with a zenithal pre-shade. You could prime in plain white, although I will be making use of the highlights on the Stormtrooper later on. I'm then going to paint the skin of the dewback, which will mean wet blending the base tones, followed with a simple shade. Next we'll paint the accessories and claws, and I'll be aiming for a nicely worn finish for the areas of leather. We'll then paint the Stormtrooper, and I'll be varying my approach from previous videos to create a slightly more refined finish. Our finishing touches will include painting the eyes, and adding some weathering along with a scenic base. Let's jump straight in with step 2. For large, textured monsters like this, wet blending would be my technique of choice for quickly laying down a solid base colour with some organic gradations. Here are the colours I've chosen for my green dewback. For the mid-tones, I'm using Castellan Green and Deathworld Forest. For the lighter tones, I'm using Nurgling Green and maybe a little white. For the darkest areas, I'm going to mix in some Incubi Darkness. You don't have to use these exact colours, of course. When picking colours for a gradient like this, there are a couple of things to bear in mind. Obviously we want to ensure we have a strong contrast between the levels of the lightest and darkest tones, but it's also a nice idea to vary the hue along the gradient. Here, for example, you can see my mid-tones are quite brownish, but my lighter tone is slightly more yellowish, and my darker tone leans much more towards blue. As usual, when wet blending, I like to use something with a little retarder to help extend the drying time. I like Vallejo's glaze medium specifically because the consistency isn't too thick. I'm beginning with the Nurgling Green, which I'm applying to the underside of the belly and the feet. I'm using a Winsor & Newton size 2 brush for this, and I'm just going to paint the left side first. When deciding how to place my colours, I was inspired by the dewbacks in the movies, but also by looking at pictures of lizards and dinosaurs, where we sometimes see the lighter tones on the underside of the creature, fading to the darker tones on top. I'm following that by placing my Deathworld Forest above. And after giving the brush a quick wipe, I'm now blending the two together. It makes sense that we should match the size of the movements of the brush with the size that we want the gradient to be. Next I'm applying my Castellan Green. I'm now blending in a little Incubi Darkness on the very top of the back. We can now paint the other side of the body in the same way.
and I'm now painting the face. Here I'm mixing in a little white to subtly boost the levels, helping to reinforce the face as a focal point. And I'm now continuing with the same colours as before. I've now switched to a smaller, size 1 brush, and I'm using some Castellan Green for the nostrils. I'm also darkening the eye area with a little Incubi Darkness. And I'm now doing a little strengthening of the tone and general tidying up of the face area. I'm pushing the contrast in the skin tones at this stage to compensate for the darkening effect of the shade which we'll be adding shortly. Once dry, it's worth checking for any gaps or areas of weak coverage. I'm now going to pick out some individual random scales using Ogryn Camo, which I'm focusing mostly around the mouth and eyes. This kind of patterning is often found on lizards like the iguana. Although this isn't an essential step, it's another nice way of drawing attention to the face area. We can also use the Nogalin Green for this. I'm also using some of the other body tones to do the same for random scales elsewhere on the model. To add some further variety, I've even chosen to place a few pale grey scales using Slanish Grey. We can now go ahead and shade the entire skin, and I'm using Athonian Camo Shade, but we'll also be blending in a little Celia Green Shade for the darker sections. I'm now applying some Celia Green Shade along the top of the back, tail and head.
With the skin complete, we can now turn our attention to the accessories. I'm now going to paint all of the leather satchels and harnesses using a roughly equal mix of Mornfang Brown, Minox Hide and Black. A long, thin-bellied brush such as this Rosemary & Co size 2 can help get to some of the hard-to-reach spots. For the fur, I'm going to blend in some pure Steel Legion drab which I'm applying to the top half. For the bundle on the back, I'm painting the ropes with the same dark brown colour. And I'm using some storm vermin fur for the bundle itself. Next I'm using some lead belcher for the driving bit. Finally, for the claws, I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Mechanicus Standard Grey and Steel Legion Drab. I'm now going to create a shade using a 2 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. I'm using this mostly to shade the fabric, satchels and the fur. I'm also applying this to the claws, mostly to help define the joins between the claws and the feet. We're now ready to apply some highlights by mixing increasing quantities of XV88 into the original dark brown mix. For the reins, I'm just providing some careful edge highlights for now. For the satchels, I'm going to spend a bit of time creating a worn finish by using a mixture of cross-hatching and stippling to create some texture. My plan is to alternate textured layers of scratches with layers of shade to create a rich, multi-layered effect. Before adding my first layer of shade, I'm going to brighten the mix with additional XV88 to increase the contrast. I'm now going to apply my shade and I'm using Seraphim Sepia to create a more yellow tinged look, although Agrax Earthshade would also be fine for this. Once dry, we can add our next layer of texture and I'm pushing the brightness up a little further. I'm 
now applying my next layer of shade. Followed once again with some more texture and I'm now using Pure XV88. We can now really begin to see the effect we're after. You can of course stop at any point you like in this process. I've chosen to push things further still by mixing some Carrick Stone into my Leather Tone and performing a couple more layers of texture and shade. It might seem tedious but it's actually quite fun to do and I feel that the finished old cracked leather result is worth the effort. Here I'm applying my last layer of shade. You could also apply some of this cracked texture to the reins and harness if you like. Here we can get away with just one or two layers of the texture and shade. I'm now going to use this light leather tone to provide a few delicate highlights for the fur. For the bundle, I'll be highlighting with the original Storm Vermin fur, to which I'll be adding increasing quantities of Carrick Stone. I'm now lightening the Storm Vermin fur in a few stages. I'm building these highlights up in several thin layers.
and I'm finishing with some pure Carrick stone. Finally, I'm going to highlight the claws by mixing increasing amounts of ivory into the original Steel Legion Drab and Mechanicus Standard Grey base tone. The claws don't need to be perfect since we'll be adding some dusty weathering here later on. I'm finishing the claws off with a small touch of pure ivory. With the dewback more or less complete, we're now ready to paint the captain. We're now going to paint Captain Taro, and I'll be taking a more refined approach with the white armour than we have in previous videos. I'm painting all of the non-white areas exactly as detailed in episode 30, so you can refer to that guide to see how I chose to paint the backpack, weapons, dark grey detailing, as well as the orange shoulder pad. I'm painting, shading and highlighting all of these areas in the usual way, but taking care not to hit the white suit. We're now going to paint the white armour. We can see that the Xenothal pre-shade has already given us some fairly subtle shading and a reasonably bright white, and you may even be tempted to leave things as they are. There are however a couple of unnaturally dark sections of armour on the underside of the arms which we need to fix first. To do that I'm going to mix some white with Mechanicus Standard Grey and carefully brighten up the panels that are currently too dark. This can also be used to neaten up any areas that may have been accidentally hit earlier on. With that done, I'm now going to shade the armour using equal parts Nuln Oil and Seraphim Sepia, which I'm thinning with three parts of Lamian Medium. This gives us a more brown tinged finish, which is typical of the kind of weathering we find on the Sand Troopers. Notice that I'm taking care to remove the excess from the upturned flat surfaces, such as the top of the helmet and the chest. Once that's dry, things are already looking pretty good. Because of the strength of the Zenithal pre-shade and the dilution of the wash, you don't even have to apply any manual highlights at all if you wish, giving us possibly the ultimate lazy approach to painting stormtroopers, although it is an approach that somewhat relies on the use of an airbrush to achieve the necessarily smooth Zenithal pre-shade to begin with. I'm going to go ahead and add some highlights anyway, and I'm starting with Vallejo's Ivory. 
The key here is to keep the paint nice and thin, but also to ensure we're not overloading the brush. That way we can spread the pigments more evenly with less chance of unwanted pooling. We can add some oily stains to the armour later on, so we shouldn't worry about the odd mistake. Here on the leg, I'm feathering the edge of this layer with a damp brush. After carefully bringing the tone up in a couple of layers, I'm now going to brighten things further by mixing in some white. If we only notice a small difference with each layer, this is a good thing. I may not necessarily take so much care with the regular stormtroopers due to the limitations of time, but for a one-off character like the captain here, we can afford to indulge. I'm once again using a damp brush here to smooth the transition out. I'm now using some pure white for my final highlights. Once we're happy with the armour, we could now glue the captain to the dewback, and we're ready for some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes of the dewback, and I'm using a roughly equal mix of Troll Slayer Orange and Avalon Sunset.
Next I'm going to apply some Fugan Orange to help darken the edges a little. And I'm now painting the pupils with a small hit of pure black. We can now finish the eyes off with a small glint of pure white. Next I'm going to add some dusty weathering to the legs and feet of the dewback using a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Zamisi Desert. For Captain Taro I'm going to add a few stains to the armour using Typhus Corrosion. This is a nice way to obscure any parts of the figure we may be unhappy with. I might also thin this down and apply some to the feet of the dewback. Next I'm going to provide some texture for the base using the same method we used for the Bantha in episode 24. That means I'll be providing an undercoat of Steel Legion Drab followed by quite a thick application of Agrelan Earth to create a cracked earth effect. Here's my Steel Legion Drab and now I'm applying the Agrelan Earth. Once that's completely dry, I'm going to apply an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Cassandora Yellow. I might also thin some of this down and brush it onto the feet. We can now go ahead and paint the rim of the base and I'm using black for this. Before applying the matte varnish I've chosen to brighten a few of the scales around the face using Ogwin Camo and Nurgling Green, again just to help draw attention to this focal area. We're now ready to protect the miniature with a matte spray. And I'm going to finish the dew back off with a little thinned gloss varnish for the eyes. And this completes Captain Taro. Of course, this isn't the only way to paint the dew back. You could take inspiration from nature and try something a little more adventurous if you like such as I've done here with a colour scheme inspired by the North American Collared Lizard. All you do is find an image that inspires you and have a go at matching the colours. You can then use the same techniques outlined in this video to create your scheme.
Thank you for watching. For full details of the products used in the video, including brushes, you can refer to the video description, where you'll also find links to my social media accounts. My special thanks as always go to the kind patrons who are supporting my creation of these videos. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!